welcome to Get Wild Guitars. I'm your host, Perry Novak. I built this mandolin out of uh, some scrap material from other guitar projects. I had a great time building it. I really don't play mandolin, but I'm going to learn how to play it. So come with me to Get Wild Guitars and I'll show you how I built it. <laughs> With the table saw blade in its utmost raised position, pass the three quarter inch maple board along the fence, cutting the board down the middle. Flip the board over and repeat. Run the two halves through a surface planer until a thickness of a quarter inch has been achieved. A planer joiner is being used here to smooth the edges of the veneer. After preparing the basswood base for the veneer top, apply tight bond glue over the entire surface. Spread the glue out evenly. Place the veneer in position. It helps if the pattern has been temporarily traced on the veneer to line up the grain. Remember, this mandolin is being made from leftover wood from other projects, so full pieces of wood were not available. Using strips of wood and clamps, fasten the maple veneer to the basswood. Now let the glue set up for 24 hours. Remove the clamps and sand any dried glue off the surface. Start sanding with a 60 grit paper, finishing with a 120 grit. Trace the pattern. Use a bandsaw or a saber saw to cut out the shape.
An oscillating spindle sander is removing the bandsaw blade marks. A router table, router, and a 3 8 of an inch roundover bit is being used to round over both the top and bottom edges. After rounding the edges, hand sand the entire body with fine sandpaper, then spray the body with sealer. The wood has been sealed now. Use a water-based transparent airbrush paint, starting with yellow in the center, followed by red spraying towards the outside edges. A blow dryer can be used to speed up the drying process. Now use black on the very outside edge. Use clear lacquer or polyurethane to seal the paint. The back of this mandolin is being painted solid black. Once the paint is dried, seal the entire body with at least 10 coats of lacquer or polyurethane. On a 3 quarter inch maple board, I designed the neck. This neck is larger than a normal mandolin neck. I guess I would call it guitar player friendly. Again, an oscillating spindle sander is being used to smooth out the edges. With a straight router bit on a router table, remove a quarter inch from the face of the headstock. This will give us the string angle from the nut to the tuning heads. Slope the area between the nut and the headstock face. Probably the most used tool in the shop is the oscillating spindle sander. Here it is being used to round the back of the neck. I said earlier that the neck is larger than a normal mandolin neck. Logging on to the Stuart McDonald site was necessary for this mandolin. Using their fret position calculator, I was able to determine where the fret slots had to be located and cut. I laid the scale out on paper and then transferred the lines onto the fretboard. On a miter box, cut the slots for the frets. Center lines on both ends of the neck and fretboard make it easy to line up for gluing. This fretboard will extend over the body. So with the straight edge, continue the lines on the bottom of the fretboard. Trim the fretboard to size. 